Good evening, everyone. I'm WGXA's Chief Meteorologist Jeff Cox. We are moments away from your election 2014 coverage, but as always, we start with a weather update. Tonight, the clouds thickening up across central Georgia. Nothing rain producing. There will be no rain tonight. There will be no rain tomorrow, but plenty of clouds, you bet. At times, mostly cloudy to overcast over the next couple of days. We'll put it into motion. You can see the clouds streaming through the area this evening. And again, the only thing they'll do is keep us a little warmer than recent nights. Right now, it's 52 in Macon, 53 in Warner Robins, right around 50 in Forsyth, 51 Milledgeville, 52 Dublin, mid 50s from Eastman into the 53 in Montezuma. Let's get you a look at that school day forecast for Wednesday. Cool but not cold at the bus stop, a nice improvement there. In fact, many of you waking up to the 50s tomorrow morning, low 70s for lunchtime, mid 70s for the ride home, but notice that trend of increasing clouds throughout the day. A small rain chance on the seven day. We'll document that plus a big cool down for Friday and the weekend. I'll have details on that coming up in less than 10 minutes, but the news starts right now. Now, news that works for you. This is WGXA News. The polls are closed, ballots cast. Tonight, we have your complete election results and expert analysis from across Georgia, including the heated U.S. Senate and governor races. Good evening, and thanks for watching WGXA News at 10. I'm Amir Makeupson. And I'm Raymond Tubb. WGXA News is your source for complete election results. Our team continues to gather those numbers, and we're ready to provide you some expert analysis as well. Races for the U.S. Senate and Georgia's next governor may be at the top of the state's ballot, but they are far from the only campaigns that voters decided today. Here's a preview of what's to come. The U.S. rep race for District 12, Democrat John Barrow, needed crossover support from conservative voters to win a sixth term in Congress. He faced Republican construction company owner Rick Allen. Five black women, all Democrats, are running statewide for the first time in Georgia for offices from lieutenant governor to labor commissioner. One of them is Valerie Wilson. She's seeking Georgia's open seat for state school superintendent. We also have results on amendments that, resolve, uh, that revolve around state income taxes and penalties and fees from reckless driving. And locally, we have four counties where SPLOST are on the ballot. Voters cast their ballots for sheriff in Crisp County, along with Sunday sales of alcohol in Cordill, Crisp County, and the city of Wrightsville. And elections were held for the newly consolidated McCray, Helena, and Telfair County. Well, first up, a race that could very well have an impact in national politics. Georgia has become a major battleground in the national fight for control of the Senate. 36 seats are up for grabs in the Senate. Democrats aiming to keep the Senate facing tough odds with their chances, depending on convincing a surge of women and African Americans to vote. The GOP has a solid grip on the House, but Republicans need a net gain of six seats to grab the Senate for the first time in nearly a decade. Exit polls show voters in Georgia appeared troubled by the economy and considered how their ballots might affect control of the U.S. Senate. Three candidates are on the ballot in Georgia. They are Republican David Perdue, Democrat Michelle Nunn, and Libertarian Amanda Swafford. Democrats consider Nunn one of their best chances to pick up a Republican Senate seat and to thwart the GOP plans to claim a majority. Polls leading up to Election Day have suggested a tight race and a possible January 6th runoff. Here's the results that we have so far. And checking it out, we have David Perdue with 58% of the vote. To Michelle Nunn's 40%. Amanda Swafford, the Libertarian candidate, has 2% of the vote. That's with about 60% of the precincts reporting. A lot of these are coming in from rural areas, though. As the urban areas start reporting in, we do expect the numbers to tighten up in this race. Georgia voters also decided today whether to give Republican Governor Nathan Deal four more years in office or make a change to Democrat Jason Carter. Libertarian Andrew Hunt was also on that ballot. Georgia's demographics has shifted closer to Democrats' favor, but Republicans were confident that their base and swing voters would turn out for the sitting governor. Democrats are counting on turning out voters who typically stay home in non-presidential years, particularly women and minorities. If a candidate does not reach more than 50% of the vote, the two leading candidates would advance to a December 2nd runoff. Here are the results that we have so far in that race. And we have Nathan Deal with 58%, Jason Carter with 40%, Andrew Hunt, the Libertarian, with 2%. Again, this is with about 60% of the precincts reporting. And again, these numbers could tighten up as we get more urban areas of the state that tend to vote more Democratic to uh, start coming in with their totals. So we'll definitely keep an eye to see what happens in this one. 
Well, it is Election Day in Central Georgia, and voters have been pouring in through the precincts. We're going to be bringing you the latest numbers and updates throughout the evening, as well as online on our Facebook and Twitter pages and our website, WGXA.TV. Right now, we've got Malcolm Johnson. He's live over at the Board of Elections. Malcolm, how are things going over there tonight? It's been very hectic here at the Board of Elections, but the, the crew here is getting the job done. I'm with Janetta Watson right now, who's the Board of Elections Commissioner here in Macon Bibb County. The last precincts just came in, correct, Janetta? Yes, everybody's reported. All right. How have things gone throughout the night? Everything's gone good. All the precincts are in. All the absentee ballots have been tabulated, and we're just trying to get some final results printed off of our gym system, and we'll be done here for the night. Got it. And so, in the Senate race, what we're looking at, with 58 percent of the vote, Mainly Democrats. Democrats have come out to vote for Michelle Nunn in the Senate race. Uh, we're still waiting on results in the gubernatorial race uh, for Bibb County as well. Uh, the state numbers have yet to come out. This is a very tight race. It's been tight throughout. Uh, we do not know who's going to win that race, and it will go on to a runoff potentially if we do not know uh, or if the winner does not have more than 50 percent of the vote. Now, if a runoff is to occur, that means it's going to take a little bit more for the staff here at the Board of Elections. Janetta, what all does that entail if a runoff were to occur? If a runoff, a runoff in, uh, entails on a state race, that means that we will turn right back around and have voting here uh, the first week of December on December 2nd. And uh, if there is a runoff on the federal ballot, then in addition to that, we will also have a runoff on January the 6th. And as in terms of staffing and, and budgeting, what would that mean for you all? And that means that um, staffing will be working through the holidays to make those runoff elections happen. So things could be very tight. Those races could both overlap with one another, as Janetta said, one in December and one in January. But all of the precincts have been accounted for in Bibb County. And as we said, mainly, mostly Democrats have come out to the polls. Reporting here at the Board of Elections, Malcolm Johnson, WGXA. All right, thanks a lot, Malcolm. Well, up next in our results, we've got the race for lieutenant governor between Republican and incumbent Casey Cagle and ex-state senator and Democrat Connie Stokes. And right now, taking a look at the latest numbers in that race, Cagle easily leading Stokes 63% to 37%, again, with about 60% of the precincts reporting. The race for Secretary of State featured a battle between incumbent and Republican Brian Kemp and financial consultant and Democrat Doreen Carter. Here's a look at the numbers as we have them right now. Brian Kemp is in the lead with 63% of the vote over Doreen Carter. She has 37% and again with about 60% of precincts reporting. Republican incumbent Attorney General Sam Olins was challenged by ex-state senator and Democrat Gregory Height. And currently, results in the AG's race show with uh, Samuel Olins with a 62 to 38 percent lead. Again, right around 60 percent of the precincts reporting. We have three U.S. rep seats up for grabs that impact districts in central Georgia. They are districts 2, 10, and 12. We're going to begin in District 2, which covers Bibb, Crawford, Crisp, Dooley, Macon, Peach, Sumter, and Taylor counties. On the ballot, incumbent and Democrat Sanford Bishop and Republican Greg Duke. Here's a look for right now. Sanford Bishop in the lead with 58 percent. Greg Duke not horribly far behind with 42 percent. On to District 10 for the U.S. House of Representatives, which covers Baldwin, Butts, Hancock, Jasper, Johnson, and Putnam and Washington counties. Democrat Ken Dias battled Republican Jody Heiss. And as of right now, our look at the numbers, Jody Heiss is in the lead with 67 percent of the vote. To District 12, where Democrat Rep. John Barrow is trailing Republican challenger Rick Allen in a congressional district draw to favor the GOP. Barrow is seeking a sixth term in the 12th district, which covers Trutland, Lawrence, Wheeler, and Montgomery counties. Barrow campaigned as a bipartisan congressman who criticizes fellow Democrats and President Obama on issues such as health care and gun control. Allen sought to persuade voters that Barrow is more two-faced than independent and promised to limit himself to no more than eight years in Congress. Our current results are showing that Rick Allen is in the lead with 48 percent over Barrow at 42 percent. One seat in the State House of Representatives and one seat in the State Senate will impact Central Georgia. On the House side, up for grabs is District 144. On the ballot is Democrat Joyce Denson, who took on incumbent and Republican James Bubber Epps. And in that race right now, Bubber Epps leading 
with 62% to 38% for Joyce Denson. That's with about 39% of the precincts reporting in that district. And over on the Senate side, we have District 20, the race the pits Republican and incumbent Ross Tollison against Democrat Sheikha Rahman. And right now, Tollison easily leading in that one, 70% to 30%, but we're showing only about 3% of the precincts in right now. Three statewide commissioners are being decided. We start with the race for Commissioner of Agriculture. You can look at any gas pump and you'll see the office represented. That's one of the many jobs for the Ag Commissioner's position. Incumbent and Republican Gary Black was challenged by businessman and Democrat Christopher Irvin. The results are showing that Gary Black in the lead with 63% over Irvin's 37%. Next up, Commissioner of Insurance. Republican incumbent Ralph Hudgens was challenged by insurance agents Elizabeth Johnson and Edward Metz. Current results are showing that Ralph Hudgens, the incumbent, in the lead with 60% of the vote tonight, trailing behind Elizabeth Johnson at 37% and even further Edward Metz at 3%. And to the Commissioner of Labor race between incumbent and Republican Mark Butler and State Rep and Democrat Robin Shipp. Our current results show that Butler is well in the lead with 62% of the vote. Well, if you went out to vote today, you had two statewide amendments that were on the, ba on the ballot. And Amendment A was a vote to prohibit an increase in the state income tax rate effective on January 1st. And 75% said they wanted to see that limit put in place. 25% saying no. That is with about 60% of the precincts reporting. Over on Amendment B, you were asked to consider adding reckless driving penalties or fees to the Brain and Spinal Injury Trust Fund. That money helps pay for care and rehab services for Georgia citizens who survive neurotrauma with head or spinal cord injuries. And 69% of the voters said yes to that measure. 31% saying no, again, with 60% of the precincts reporting. Voters decided on a statewide referendum to allow property owned by the University System of Georgia and operated by providers of student housing and other facilities to remain exempt from taxes. And 73% say yes to that measure, 27% say no. And now for our web poll results. Earlier in our 5 o'clock newscast, we asked you, did you vote in today's midterm election? 90% of you said yes, 10% of you said no. Just it shows if you're apt to go to the polls, you're apt to vote in the web poll, yes, too. Yes, absolutely. Well, coming up on a special edition of WGXA News at 10, political analysis from Dr. Chris Grant. He's here in studio with an inside look behind the returns. And we're tracking our next chance of rain, although the rain chance isn't that great. A bigger chance of turning colder for the weekend. I'll have details on that along with the seven-day just minutes from now. And there are many local races on the area ballot. We're going to continue to run those updated results on those races for you on the bottom of your screen and also at the end of each segment during tonight's newscast. Here's some right now.
Well, welcome back to WGXA News at 10. I'm Raymond Tubb, and joining us now is political analyst Dr. Chris Grant from Mercer University, and good to have you with us here tonight. And um, any big surprises so far in the in the Georgia races that we're seeing? Well, we're still waiting for a lot of counties to come in. Mm -hmm. Fulton isn't fully reported. Muskogee hasn't reported anything. Chatham hasn't reported. Um, uh, Dougherty hasn't reported. So there's still a lot of Democratic can places that haven't reported. But the trend looks good for Republicans, and it may be that both Republicans avoid the runoff. And, and I've been seeing this race is going down to runoffs in both of those, so that would be a little bit of a surprise to me. It almost looks like right now the numbers are looking a lot like they would have been like nine or ten months ago when the original polling was taking place. Right, and, and, it's, and it certainly is reminiscent of 2010, which I thought that this was going to be a race that, a race that was going to change some of those numbers. And I think the Democrats will wind up doing better in the end than they did in 2010. But right now they're not looking quite as strong as I had kind of expected them to. Um, the evidence at least is that there were no inroads made in the rural parts of Georgia and some of the places where there were hopefully from the Democrats' perspective some residual Democrats, folks that hadn't been with them in 2002, 2006, 2010, and now they can say and 2014. And something that the Democrats didn't really talk too much about before him, it looks like they're going to lose the seat in Congress in the Georgia delegation with John Barrow going down tonight. Yeah, I thought Barrow was going to hold on because, mm -hmm. you know, it's this race has been on the He's been there for, what, 10 spot. years yeah. already. Yeah. He's been in the spotlight. He's always been the race that we all needed to think about. And this race, it didn't seem like he was going to go down. The polls looked pretty good for him, but it sure does look like tonight that Rick Allen may have done John Barrow in. And, and we're going to see the last white Democrat, male white Democrat, leave Congress in the South from Virginia to Texas, there are no white Democrats with the exception of Florida. So that's a pretty profound statement about what's changing in politics in the South. And the way the districts may be drawn, too. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, of course, the big national story is the balance of power, the shift right. of that in the U.S. Senate. It looks like so far the GOP has swung three of those seats over, and Montana is probably going to go, too. That gives them right. four of the six they needed. Right, and, and they need one more. And um, it looks like uh, Gene Shaheen has held on in New Hampshire. That's already projected. Um, Kay Hagan seems to be doing well in North Carolina to get out the vote and the, the emphasis on early voting in North Carolina seems to have paid off for the Democrats. So they're going to have to look for a different seat to take out. But Louisiana um, is certainly a prospect for the, Demo for the Republicans. And Iowa looks like it could go for the Republicans. So there's, there's several other seats, Colorado, Alaska. There's, there's several pathways to at least 51 seats for the Republicans. And, of course, the night's still young. We've still got the western states, the polls closing out there, and a lot of vote tallying to be done in Georgia, as Dr. Grant mentioned. We're looking at more urban areas starting to come in. That could tighten the races for the Democrats, but so far it's looking like a pretty big night for the GOP in Georgia, and it could be a very big night for the GOP in the entire United States. In the second half of our show, Dr. Chris Grant will be back with another look at what the election results mean. Uh, great analysis, gentlemen. Really looking good there, and we'll have more results coming up, as Raymond said. I'm also monitoring a small rain chance coming our way. We'll document that. Plus, I'm looking at a big cool down for the weekend. Also, your full forecast is coming up after this. But first, there were many local races on area ballots today. We'll continue to run updated results for those on the bottom of your screen and at the end of each segment during tonight's newscast.
Well, just after 10.30 on this election night, right now let's get an update on the top two statewide races for U.S. Senate. Three candidates are on the ballot in Georgia. We have David Perdue, Michelle Nunn, and Amanda Swafford. Remember, Democrats consider Nunn one of their best chances to pick up a Republican Senate seat and try to thwart GOP plans to claim a majority. Polls leading up to Election Day have suggested a tight race and a possible January 6th runoff. Here are the results that we have so far. It's looking like as of now, David Perdue is in the lead with 57% of the vote. This is with 71 of the precincts reporting, Michelle Nunn trailing with 41%. Of course, another heated race in Georgia for governor. Incumbent Nathan Deal was challenged by Jason Carter. And with Libertarian Andrew Hunt on the ballot, the race could end up in a runoff. Right now, here are the latest results we have in that race. It's Nathan Deal with 57%, Jason Carter at 41%, Andrew Hunt with 2%. That's with 70% of the precincts. Now, again, a lot of the outstanding precincts are in urban areas. Those tend to go more Democrats, so we expect these numbers to tighten up. But right now, a pretty comfortable-looking lead for the GOP candidates. Welcome back to WGXA News at 10. I'm Raymond Tubb, and joining us now is WGXA's political analyst, Dr. Chris Grant. And uh, it's now official. They have called the John Barrow Rick Allen race for Allen, the Republican challenger. So Georgia's congressional delegation looks like is picking up an extra GOP member on it. Right, and, and also that, ra that delegation is going to be uh, black Democrats and white Republicans. And that's, that's where it was a few years back. Then we had Jim Marshall and John Barrow get elected, and now we're going back to the old way. This has a lot to do with the way the district lines are drawn, and Barrow's actually had to move in that district. He moved down to Savannah, then up to Augusta, and so he's always had to try to reconnect with voters, despite the fact that he had served for a while. But still, I guess losing a 10-year veteran is, is still a pretty big blow for the Democrats in Georgia, not one they probably saw coming. I, I don't think they saw the Barrow race going this way. I think they really saw this race um, probably safer than it had been in the past few cycles. Um, and that was probably a mistake. And if you think back to when Jim Marshall lost here in the Macon area, um, it was also a midterm election, and it was also a time when the Democrats sort of thought that he had made it long enough that he was okay. Of course, so far tonight, uh, David Perdue's held a pretty comfortable lead in his race. If uh, Georgia holds on and, um, and then the GOP is able to hold on to all their states, they need to turn six more. So far, they have turned four states right. from uh, Democrat to Republican. So if they hold what they've got, they just need to turn two more, and they've got the majority they want it. That's right. And, and Alaska's still out, and there's uh, Montana is a likely turn for the GOP, um, and, and Colorado's looking like it's going Republican. So they've, they've won Arkansas and Colorado away from the Democrats. That gets them to 50. If they win um, Alaska, that would get them to 51. If they win Louisiana in a few weeks, if there's a runoff there, um, that gets them up to um, that number. The one place they could go the other way is Kansas, and we're still waiting to find out what comes out of that. But then that's a question because Greg Warman hasn't told us whether he's going to caucus with the Democrats or the Republicans. Uh, and here in Georgia, it looks like the Democrats may settle around somewhere around 45% when the night's fully over and all the election returns are in. Maybe a little bit higher than that, um, but it doesn't look like we're going to have the runoffs, which we once sort of looked like it was going to happen about a couple weeks ago. A lot of the exit polling show that people are not happy with the president and what he's been getting done. They're not happy with the GOP leadership and what it's been getting done. Well, now, if everything goes so far like it seems to be going, we could end up with GOP-controlled House and Senate, Democratic president, what are we looking at over the next two years? Well, it's going to be interesting, and it, and it comes down to whether John Boehner and Mitch McConnell are going to be able to make deals with President Obama, whether they see it in their best interest to make deals with President Obama. Um, uh, there's one polling result that's kind of different. Four years ago, um, people indicated that they wanted uh, representatives to stand their ground. This time, people indicated in exit polling that they wanted representatives to find compromise. Well, and that's sometimes hard. It's easier to say than to do. So it'll be very interesting. One of the things that we really do experience in this country is because our districts are drawn for political parties' advantage, we really tend to elect people that are not coasting toward the center but bend toward the outside. Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it leads to uh, the kind of government that we get, which is exactly what James Madison said that we needed to have. <laughs> we have a government that wouldn't move and wouldn't do too much. Some people it say fun. it's not a bad that's thing. Right. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, still a lot of vote totals to come in tonight. and We'll be watching it throughout the night right now. Back to you, Amir. Thank you, Raymond. After the break, a quick recap of the Senate and governor's races. Stay tuned. And as we go to break, here's a look at some of the local races from across central Georgia.
Well, as we approach the end of the hour, let's get an update on the two big statewide races we've been following all night for the U.S. Senate. Three candidates are on the ballot in Georgia. David Perdue, Michelle Nunn, and Amanda Swafford, the Libertarian. Polls leading up to the election day have suggested a tight race and a possible January 6th runoff. Here are the results that we have so far with about 89% of precincts reporting. David Perdue is in lead with 56% of the vote over Michelle Nunn's 42%. Far behind is Amanda Swafford with 2%. And CNN's actually calling that race for Perdue right now, but there have been no official final results and no concession speeches or victory speeches announced yet, but we're following that for you. Right now, another heated race in Georgia, this one for governor. Incumbent Nathan Deal was challenged by Jason Carter with Libertarian Andrew Hunt on the ballot. And that race could end up in a runoff. Right now, here are the latest results in that one. Nathan Deal with 56%, Jason Carter with 41%, and Libertarian Andrew Hunt with 2%. That's again with about 89% of the precincts reporting and we mentioned that as the urban areas started coming in that's a, a lot of the votes that are out are in those urban areas they tend to go more democrat we thought that race would tighten up it has tightened up but it's still a pretty comfortable lead there for nathan deal now if you've missed any of our results make sure to visit our website wgxa.tv we have the latest information analysis and reaction plus results from across central georgia and, of course, finally, a look at the weather, too. Not an impact at all today. Not at all. Take a breath, guys. <laughs> Amazing job in analysis. And Dr. Thanks. Grant's done a great job. Really, really nicely done. Seven-day forecast. We'll round it out with increasing clouds. Uh, tomorrow looks mostly cloudy and at times could be completely overcast. Uh, the rain chance on Thursday, I've taken out the uh, pen and made it more pencil. It's, it's kind of penciled in right now. Uh, we may be able to remove that Thursday rain altogether. I don't think it will be a very sunny day. Uh, but I don't think it'll be a very rainy day either. So isolated at best right now, very warm the next two days. That cold front will deliver another blast of cool weather to the area. So by Friday, we're looking at low 60s for highs. And by Saturday morning, mid 30s, and it looks like the 60s and mid to upper 30s and right around 40 will stick ahead and on into early next week. So it looks like we may settle into a, a rut where temperatures stay below average. And I documented yesterday that the long term outlook for November is a below average temperature yeah. plan. So uh, it looks like that may be taking shape on the seven day forecast right now. So if you're a fan of cool weather, I think you'll like what we've got headed our way. And again, that Thursday rain chance is not that impressive. It actually is pretty pleasant. It looks more cool than cold. So it looks like something we can deal with, especially for November. If, if I had to be cool versus cold, sign me up for cool because the 20s were brutal. Guys. Yeah, that was, not, that was too much. Not yes, a fun indeed. weekend at all. Well, we're going to have continuing coverage of the election over on our sister station, ABC 16. You can switch over, join us there. Of course, we're going to have the results scrolling on the bottom of the screen and also you can join us through our social media continuous updates there as well thanks for joining us tonight it's been fun that's it for wgxa news at 10 and don't forget to start your day with us tomorrow with wgxa morning news stick around for hot in cleveland and again more election results coming up on abc at 11 o'clock